and welcome everyone today to our first uh, session to, to prepare this event. This is organized by the IAI. We are working towards the uh, uh, Climate Change COP27. Jovan, can you please silence, uh, mute your mic? Thank you. Okay. If you need interpretation, please uh, click on at the bottom of the screen on the globe. Si necesitan interpretación al inglés, les pido que seleccionen el idioma que prefieran escuchar en el botón de interpretación. Muchas gracias. Okay, as I was saying, we are here to talk about the science communication towards uh, the COP27 that will be held this year in Egypt. This is the first webinar of a series of virtual seminars that the AAI has organized. Today we will be launching the compendium that we have published jointly with uh, Latino America 21 or LAT21 and they are here today. Now I would like to share my screen to uh, show you the compendium that we have developed. Thank you. As I was saying, today we are launching, uh, you know, for the first time, this compendium as developed by the IAI and Latino America 21 in English, French, and uh, in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Sorry. This uh, publication includes the main topics in Latin America. Today we have some of the authors, actually three of the authors of the compendium, and also the co-editors of Latin America 21, or LAT 21. We will be uh, making this publication available shortly so that you can download it in PDF format. Let us now begin with Geronimo Giorgi, who is the founder and director of LAT21. He has a master's degree in journalism awarded by the University of Barcelona, Columbia University, and also another one awarded by the Universidad Complutense Madrid. Latino America 21 is a portal that shares editorials and opinion pieces in national newspapers and also the, the original articles of this Companion were published through LAT 21 in regional newspapers. Jerónimo, you have the floor. Thank you, Irene. Thank you for this introduction. On behalf of LAT 21, I would like to thank you for your support and trust. Thank you to the IAI. Um, the project, you know, this publication that we're launching today, uh, in a way completes the, uh, the work of one whole year. We started to work, uh, to work together last year with the IAI. And this is like, um, it shows the completion of the work through men mentorships and other projects. And now we have published this uh, document. This partnership between the IAI and LAT21 in the last year is interesting from different perspectives, but uh, most of all because it brings together two complementary elements, um, which are communication and the academia or academic uh, knowledge and research. These two areas have their own needs. And in this partnership we have found or we have joint efforts in order to uh, be able to communicate the, the knowledge produced by the IAIA and its uh, academic researchers that work on climate change, sustainability, etc. And from LAT21, we have been able to, you know, uh, contribute our communication knowledge. As Irene was saying, LAT21 is a portal specializing in Latin American issues. But specifically, it, uh, it's uh, columnists, over 300 now, uh, most of them are uh, academics. Or uh, So this work that we are doing with the IAI 
uh, started many years ago, actually. It, the work mainly involves the interaction between the academia and knowledge. And Angelo, Juan, Emilio, myself, and many others at LAT21, what we are doing is try to uh, help uh, academics learn how to write for a larger audience. The idea is to, you know, uh, be able to uh, tap into that knowledge at universities universities that many times remains concealed uh, and it's hard to you know uh, for decision makers to access this knowledge in order to have an impact so what we try to do is release this knowledge you know so that this knowledge can be actually known by um, larger audiences so with the IAI at the beginning of the year we decided to organize mentorships. These were sessions focused on research groups or individual researchers so that maybe through a paper research or idea they, the process could develop so that a journalistic piece would be written um, for its publication. In this case the piece was published in LATS 21 in English and Spanish or Portuguese. Uh, and also some other partners, uh, LAT21, we have mainly 20 um, media partners in the continent. So these texts have been published in um, renowned uh, media outlets and the, the audience is quite large. So this, in a way, you know, uh, completes the, the, the mentorship processes and it materializes the, this joint uh, effort. So thank you again, and hopefully we will continue working together. And now I would like to give you uh, back the floor, Irene. Thank you very much, Jerónimo. We are very proud of the, work done, of the joint work done uh, by both organizations. And we're very proud of the work done by the authors of this compendium and they actually will be sharing the uh, they will be addressing the topics uh, in uh, addressed in their articles first of all Fanny Ramos Fanny Ramos is an IAI step fellow that uh, participates in the Belmont forum and now I would like to uh, uh, tell you a little bit about Fanny there we go. Fanny Ramos Quispe has a BA in environmental engineering and a master's degree in environmental change and international development. She works in the interface of uh, climate change related sciences, policies, and she's part of the OWS Bolivia. She is an IAI Step Fellow that currently that is currently part of the Belmont Forum. Thank you, Fanny, for being here with us today. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you, Irene. Irene, thank you, uh, IAI and the Belmont Forum, also for allowing us to share. Um, uh, research and reflections on the challenges we are facing. I would like to focus on the piece I wrote for this compendium so that I can share it with the people who are interested in uh, environmental change issues. And it's more like a reflection from my experience we will be working from the academic perspective and also regarding the challenges we are facing uh, while working in the government and also when it comes to implementing uh, local policies and also regional policies. 
So I would like to start by uh, citing Albert Einstein. Einstein, uh, he said over a century ago that we cannot solve problems by, uh, you know, thinking the same way as when the problems uh, emerged. And I think that uh, in the history of humankind, we have been uh, ch uh, facing challenges all the time. Currently, there is a frame of mind and a way of seeing life and of living. And, uh, and this way of life or of thinking has neg a negative impact on our lives. It affects our health. Um, and there, there are also negative uh, consequences on the environment. Just some data that we have collected. For instance, according to the World Health Organization in 2019, hurricanes caused by uh, global warming have caused around 465,000 displacements in over seven countries in the Caribbean. There are many more data, and you can see them daily on the news, on the social media regarding the negative consequences of all this. Uh, for instance, um, global warming, and that's just an example. There are other data on what humankind is doing, what the countries and research centers are doing and other institutions as well in order to face or reduce these impacts. Uh, of course, we are, you know, doing quite a lot of work as, as humans, uh, but regarding climate change, uh, we need to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. And, you know, we shouldn't reach such a te dangerous temperature that would change the dynamics of ecosystems in our system, in our, on our planet. Our planet is a living but vulnerable system. So apparently we won't be able, you know, to limit this temperature increase. Um, so this combination of challenges and actions that seem to be insufficient. Uh, uh, this combination forces us to reflect on what we have to change about the way in which we do science, in which we um, uh, develop policies, and how we relate as humans, because this is what politics is about, how we relate as, as human groups. And now more than ever, because of this ecological crisis, we need to reconsider the way in which we relate with uh, the earth. In, in Bolivia, my country, for instance, we call it Mother Earth because there is this intrinsic survival relationship that we have and, and we need to recover this. I also mentioned this in the article. Um, for instance, uh, you know, the prevailing scientific uh, view um, remains outside uh, mainstream society because for us researchers or scientists, it's hard to, to work with governments, local or society stakeholders. And I believe and in this article, we say that this is one of the issues we need to promote. There are also many restrictions or intrinsic restrictions within our social systems. Because clearly, in order to better communicate and keep an open communication path with local groups, with local communities and indigenous peoples, in our research processes, we need a lot more time, more financial resources and other means that for the time being uh, will not be available. And this is something that is very useful. Uh, it helps us reflect uh, to see where we can build bridges to work with, for instance, IAI countries or with countries that participate in the development forum. 
and the idea is to improve our work and 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 to work closer with communities as well okay i don't think have i have much time left but i would also like to say that institutions such as the IAI and Development Forum are fully committed to exploring these other ways of, you know, uh, working together with the various stakeholders that are part of society in order to um, do science that is valuable, that, that, that really caters to the uh, challenges and problems we need to face right now. Um, so, very briefly, that's what I have to say. Irene, maybe we could have some sort of conversation with my other colleagues and also, of course, answer questions or listen to comments from the people that have been able to, re to read the texts. Thank you, Fanny. Okay, let us now go on to... Duran Andres Carotapia, he is a young person from the municipality of Maria La Baja in Colombia. He is a researcher in the area of earth conflicts in the, in the Caribbean. Uh, sorry, I forgot to share the screen with your publication on it. He is a researcher in areas related to conflicts in the Caribbean. For many years, he has supported research projects and initiatives on transformations related to land use transformation at Maria La Baja. And he ha has led several organizations of local people that have been displaced from Monte de Maria. In his article, he talks about, uh, you know, um, using territories, uh, companies using territories that don't belong to them, and also what happens with eth ethnic and peasant communities in the um, Colombian Caribbean. Thank you, Duvan. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So first of all, I would like to thank the IAI for the invitation to participate here today. Um, in the article we published, we also talk about the importance of co-creation when it comes to doing scientific research related to the environment and conservation, and when it comes to protecting nature as well. So in this article, we explore how, uh, you know, the joint work by scientists, local universities, uh, peasant and ethnic institutions and rural communities that live in this area, in the Caribbean region, had the following result. The creation of several communication pieces where communities expressed the knowledge and acquired wisdom um, related to uh, conservation work. And as we say here in Montes de Maria, the idea is to continue uh, growing, um, uh, growing different types of uh, vegetation because, and this is very important for the Caribbean. This is a co creation, scientific co creation approach, and it includes, you know, scientists, communities, etc., uh, within the region. Our aim is to have a clear path ahead of us so that we can make decisions that will allow us to. Um, you know, protect the environment of the ethnic and peasant communities that live in Monte de Maria, which is my case as well. We developed uh, a number of uh, texts and beautiful illustrations about the territory and all its elements, human and non-human. And we also uh, um, 
prepared a number of podcasts where communities narrated using their own voices, their ex, uh, the experiences uh, related to the dry uh, forests and the water basins. And they also share their concerns about where we are going um, as a society. Sorry, uh, are you done, Duan? Okay, great, thank you. Um, I, I, I would like just for this to be, you know, an open debate or conversation with all the participants. Thank you very much, Duan. So now we have Aunt Teresa. Thank you so much, Irene. Estoy buscando, ahora ya no te encuentro, Aunt Teresa. Te tenía aquí y no te encuentro en las biografías. <ríe> Estaba tan entusiasmada de hablar. De Aunt Teresa, ¿podrías por favor tú presentarte? Porque tenía tu biografía y desapareció. De <ríe> Pero Aunt Teresa es eh, la no abuela que está con nosotros en el día ahí. <ríe> Adelante, Anti, gracias. Okay, thanks so much. No worries. Hi, everyone. Um, as Irene said, my name is Anne Teresa Birthright. Um, I'm from Jamaica. I reside in Jamaica. Um, I have a PhD in geography. Um, I usually work within the area of rural livelihoods, um, agriculture, climate change adaptation. And currently, I am a step fellow with the IAI, um, working within the area of capacity building. Um, which concerned you know, science diplomacy and launching our new um, science diplomacy center. Um, so right now I just want to go into really talking about my article and I'm really appreciative uh, to the IAI and to LAC21 for the opportunity to share my work and you know, to a broader audience. So my work, um, the article is on rural women and the, the challenges that they face um, from the impacts of climate change. And I wanted to start off similar to how I started off my article with the quote from uh, the former president of Costa Rica, Mrs. Laura Chinchilla, uh, where she said, and this was back in 2010, when she gave a presentation at the um, at the International Forum for Women in Agriculture. And she said that there is no social sector more invisible, less understood and less served than that of rural women, despite the vital role they play in our rural communities, All right? I thought this was a powerful um, statement and very fitting as it captures the reality of rural women and it puts light on the work that needs to be done, right? So my article um, was really about gender equality and the challenges facing Blue Mountain women coffee farmers here in Jamaica, right? Um, their livelihoods are being impacted by climate change such as you know, more droughts, more pests and diseases. Um, the season in, you know, when they should plant or harvest their coffee has been disrupted, which affect their coffee production and their ability to provide for their families. It affects their ability to send their children to school, right? So some persons, on the other hand, some persons might say, you know, well, Aren't male coffee farmers also being affected? Yes, they are. But as a male dominated industry, we find that it is because women coffee farmers have less access to land, less access to farm materials, less access to technology, um, information and training, why they are more affected by the impacts of climate change. and you know, they find it more difficult to manage. I mean, I've 
personally, I've, I've been among our women coffee farmers. I've experienced their stories, right? They believe that um, they are unrecognized. They believe that they are invisible um, within the industry, right? They, they see where resources and training and support and even information, they're mainly given to men. And that's why it's so important to really capture these voices from the field, from the ground, right? Because sometimes the focus on the technical science often overshadows the reality of those experiencing the impacts on the ground. Um, so what is needed really is to tackle the root causes of gender inequality. And this starts with having more information on the role of women in the coffee industry. This can then feed into having a gender perspective in the design of our public policies, in the design of our program and intervention strategies, you know, such as trainings. And this way it can really pave a way to invest um, into equal and fair access to opportunities such as training and education, um, financing and technology, investing in fair access to land and productive resources. And of course, this can further lead to strengthening climate change and adaptation efforts, right? So, it's not enough to just highlight the problem, but to also suggest, you know, possible solutions and solutions that can even be applied in the local context to other coffee growing regions in Latin America and the Caribbean, right? And that's what I actually hoped for that, you know, that my article brought across. And I hope it was successful in doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Aunt Teresa. Um, now, maybe we can have like a conversation with our participants. Let's have a look at the chat. Let's see how we can invite participants to ask questions in the chat. In the meantime, here we have Angelo Atanasio. He's a multimedia journalist and editor. He was a BBC producer in London between 20, 2007 and 2021. He has an MA in journalism awarded by the Barcelona University and Columbia University. He was awarded the Spain Award in Journalism in 2016. Thank you, Angelo. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here in this uh, launch. I would like to talk about the process that we have implemented with Jeronimo, Juan and the LATS21 team in order you know, to have these final texts that you have. I would like to talk about you know, what happened uh, behind the scenes. Um, and the methodology that we have uh, applied uh, and as Jeronimo was saying to reach a more a, a, a wider audience this is an audience that maybe is not used to reading scientific texts and they're not used to reading uh, the, 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 the structure of scientific communication so our challenge was to get all these interesting studies on several topics to reach a larger audience. As I was saying, this was a constructive dialogue between researchers and the L21 team. There were three main pillars. First, we needed to find a focus. It was very important for us to understand which was the best focus in order to tell the story to a wider audience. You know, many times researchers, if I may, are so focused on their research, on their results, that you, you know, they um, lose sight of the real value of the research to a wider audience. Of course, it's valuable. So the idea was to, you know, uh, shed some light on it and to get a headline, you know, 
Um, because the idea was also to suggest a headline. This would make it easier to understand the research. So that was number one. Number two, uh, of course, we always make suggestions or give advice, you know. So we suggested a text structure. One of the main um, outcomes of our research is that the order of the information is essential when it comes to actually um, transmitting a message. A solid structure enables uh, non-specialist readers not, uh, you know, to stay uh, tuned and not get lost. So we suggested a few flexible states that could adapt to each person's text. We also suggested that uh, when writing they should consider the text, the urbanization of the text. When you read a story it's very important to be able to have a main character. I'm very happy to see some of our contributors here today, especially Anne Theresa Birthright, because we have worked on her text with Jerónimo. And as she said a few minutes ago, she started her text with a quote by the former president of Costa Rica, Chinchilla. And then she had um, uh, a more argumentative paragraph, let's say. I can read it out loud. Gender equality has been recognized as a world priority to achieve sustainable development, especially considering its importance to address problems related to social inequalities and climate injustice. This is true. This is something that had to be included in the text. But we suggested that she shouldn't start this way. And for instance, she could tell a story that she knows well. For instance, this whole Blue Mountain coffee uh, in Jamaica. So in the text, you will see that the text begins. Uh, Blue Mountain coffee is one of the most expensive special coffee grains in the world. It supplies uh, the market and it's very expensive, uh, over $88 uh, dollars a pound. So this is a lot more specific in a way, okay? Uh, it's, it's coffee you might find at a cop coffee shop. And from this, you can, you know, make readers more interested and you can continue uh, elaborating on a complex topic. And finally, the third uh, pillar uh, has to do with the language style. In which sense? Okay, for instance, we suggested that they should include as many examples as possible, you know, relevant examples, because through examples, uh, people can really understand a study, and this is how you make things uh, more relevant. Also, you can simplify figures and make comparisons. For instance, there was a text about fires in the Amazon and someone someone said the Amazon uh, lost 447 million uh, acres of forest in the last I don't know how many years. We suggested that they should say 190,000 square kilometers which is better understood here and this is, would, is equivalent to, to uh, Uruguay's surface for instance. If you don't know what that uh, area is like if you imagine if you remember the size of Uruguay, then you have a better idea. So this has been the toolkit we have implemented and also how we have worked with the authors so that the final texts uh, came to fruition as you have them before you now. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angelo. We do have a question here. How do we, how as researchers and specialists in science, science communication, how do we, you know, join efforts so that governments actually listen to the results of the science community, scientific community? Um, of course, there, there will be negotiations at the climate change conference, okay? I believe that our greatest challenge is that the work we do, the research work we do, actually reaches government with the support of science communication. 
so that they don't just focus on negotiations and political debates. How do we do that? Uh, from your experience, maybe one of the authors uh, can say something, or maybe Jeronimo or Angela can say something. Uh, Duvan, Duvan has something to say. Please go ahead. I think one of the clearest ways to do this, and that has serious results as well, is that that uh, scientific information should reach communities, because it is us, the communities, that actually choose or elect our, our rulers in a way. So if we if we have research processes uh, aimed at communities and also their results and their objectives should align with what communities want to do. If that happens, then maybe we can choose a leader that can actually represent us and defend our conservation, our community conservation interests as a society. Fanny, go ahead. Thank you. I agree with Duvan. I would just like to add, maybe from a different perspective and from my experience, I believe that from the academia we tend to over-focus on research processes and we apply such methodologies, of course they, they are prevailing, the prevailing methodologies in, in, the, in academia or or the way in which we approach approach certain issues. But I believe that what Duvan is saying is also very important. You know, co-creation from the very beginning, co-designing, I don't know, the research topic that should really be of interest and it should be relevant and important uh, to community, local communities and the governments and the academia. So that, that would be the best way to approach things. We are, we are on that path clearly and i'm very happy to hear so many people reflect on this reflect on how we do this because it's a very complex issue especially when we compare all this to the let's say uh, classical research methodologies in my article i talk about them but there there is a difference now so and also as earth inhabitants if we want to survive uh, uh, this uh, ecological crisis we need to find a different way of approaching things thank you and teresa from your experience working directly with organization do you also reach politicians did you get an answer to your article in the compendium Hi, Irene. Um, so, no, I didn't <laughs> get an answer. <laughs> but these things, they do take time, especially as a new organization. I mean, um, the Jamaica Women in Coffee, we, we are relatively new within the coffee space. And um, our main focus has been to uh, further, you know, really extend our reach to the, the women within the communities, right? Because um, oftentimes what we found was that um, there's not sufficient information on women operating within uh, Jamaica's coffee industry. And our role as a, as a charitable organization or as an NGO is really to um, bring their voices to the forefront, right? And to really have that profile of, you know, who are these women that operate within the industry? Um, what are their unique challenges? I mean, even um, things such as the time when training should take place, right? Oftentimes, organizations within the industry, they may not take that into account to say, you know, we need to have trainings at a particular time to take advantage of the full participation of women within the industry or women coffee farmers, right? So um, our role really 
is to bring that knowledge to the forefront. And we have been engaging um, government officials, but it does take time for change to happen. And it's, I think once you have the drive to make that happen, it will, especially when you have a team um, that, you know, has, they have that passion to see a change come about within the industry. Um, so yeah, it does, it does take time. Thank you, Aunt Teresa. Geronimo, you have a, a wide experience uh, as a journalist, uh, for instance, at the BBC. You know about the impact of journalism, its impact on political decision making. Do you think that uh, early uh, career researchers such as Fanny and Teresa and Duvan, do you think that they might uh, publish other articles with LAT21 in national newspapers in order to actually have an impact on decision makers and politicians? Angelo, you have the floor. Uh, and maybe there was a, a confusion regarding the BBC uh, experience. Actually, Angelo has worked uh, more extensively with high impact uh, media outlets. Yes, sorry, Geronimo. Uh, go ahead, Angelo. Angelo. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can answer. Yes. I think that the main element is to build a story with that has a content and this content sh should help us create this public dialogue so contributions are important of course and it's great that they're young as well and early career researchers because their language how they approach new problems are different you know if you're 50 years old or 25 years old also because of the future they have ahead of them it's different so yes absolutely yes the work is essential, uh, but also we need to be realistic. It does take time. It takes a lot of effort and time. We cannot assess achievements in the short or mid term, but we need to, you know, uh, go for the long term because these are usually the generations that will um, remain. Now I would like to give the floor to Geronimo. Thank you, Angelo. Go ahead, Geronimo. Thank you, Irene. In the same vein, you know, for an, uh, uh, when academics publish uh, an article in a media outlet, they, it's actually something new uh, to them. <clears throat> and I don't know, maybe they, they're anxious about the, the, the reach of the text, etc. And we know that it's very difficult for one article to have a huge impact or a huge reach. However, uh, we have worked with the IAI, uh, with other publications on the same topics, and there has been some impact. For instance, um, uh, a foreign affairs minister or the Mercosur parliament or something like that, they cite the texts, you know, or they respond to the texts on a different media outlet. So we see that, that there is some impact, but beyond the impact of my text, we need to understand this as a, as a long-term process, as Angelo is saying. We need to, these are 12, 13, 14 texts that we have written and they have been republished in uh, something like 30 or 40 times in high impact media. So there is this like accumulation effect, you know, uh, which shows that this is, a, you know, a step by step process that we need to contribute our part, even if it's small. Ultima Hora, uh, the largest uh, media outlet in Paraguay, uh, sent me yesterday the eight texts that they have had published. And most of them were taken from the compendium, which was really surprising. And it shouldn't surprise us, uh, but actually it shows us that climate change and sustainability is an expanding 
topic. And now we have, you know, more experts writing about these topics. Uh, also, there's a climate change and sustainability section, which is getting larger. So uh, it shouldn't be surprising in Paraguay, there are several environmental and seri serious environmental problems. And now they have a whole newspaper section, you know, devoted to this topic. And they publish these texts uh, systematically. And the idea is, you know, to help people reflect on all this. But, you know, it's uh, step by step work. We need to uh, keep working on an ongoing basis. Yes, when we work step by step, we are very resilient. Um, I was sharing the list of media outlets that publish these texts. Thank you, Jerónimo. We have two amazing questions. One uh, addressed to the authors. How does it feel to see your words published in uh, n uh, national media outlets from the region? And do you plan to go on publishing like this? Okay, oh, I can start. <laughs> uh, I am ecstatic, excited, happy, elated, all the synonyms. <laughs> yes, I was extre extremely happy. And um, I think another layer that adds to that happiness uh, was that these countries, um, some of them, they do have IWCA chapters, which is uh, the International Women's Coffee Alliance, right? And that's the organization that Jawik is a part of. Um, so, you know, having the work published in, you know, Ecuador, in Colombia, I think it was also in Brazil, uh, we have IWCA chapters there. So it was my hope that, you know, the article would reach you know, those women as well, and they see that, yes, you know, um, their issue is being tackled, it's being acknowledged, um, it's being highlighted. So that's one of the um, areas that I was really excited about. Thank you, Aunt Teresa. Fanny. Thank you, Irene. Um, well, I feel, I also feel happy and grateful, especially because of uh, this space to share my reflections and ideas. And I'm also very surprised uh, about the reach of a text that, uh, you know, it's our text. <laughs> and in my case, I was very surprised because the Ministry of Science and Technology of Chile, for instance, they read the text, they quoted it, they commented on the text. Uh, and also as IAI fellows, that um, uh, maybe strengthens my positions and it, in my position and encourages me to, to, to continue writing. So yes, of course, I, I want to uh, continue writing. I have many topics I'm now considering. So I, I just need to find some time to, to write. Thank you, Fanny. Duvan. Yes very happy to actually uh, get my work published and also uh, because it includes other voices and other media in the conversation. Of course, I am very much willing to uh, continue co-producing, co-creating and you know, producing relevant information that will reach other communities and regions. So from Montes de Maria, we uh, are here, uh, very much willing to write and co-create with other people that want to be part of these joint efforts. Thank you, Duvan. Um, please remember that these authors are available if you want to be encouraged to write for LAT21. And LAT21 also provides editing support so that you can, you know, uh, write a, a, a scientific um, article. We have two uh, questions that are connected. 
uh, sometimes it's very difficult to do this work and, and changes are very small. So how do we find motivation? Another question to Jeronimo and Angelo. What can you tell us about the experience of getting the newspapers to include these articles, which are really scientific? And that's also a very uh, painstaking effort, let's say, and you've been doing it for a long time. So Angelo, Angelo and Jeronimo, please let us know, because, because it was also very difficult, you know, to edit this work and work with the authors. I'd like to start. Yes, go ahead, Fanny. Uh, I would like to answer the first question. Yes, yes, go ahead. I think, I think that we should focus on accepting that things take time, as Anne Teresa was saying. We might not see the changes we want to see, or they have taught us that they should that changes should be quick, uh, but no. So we need to work on our uh, expectations, and things will not be so easy. We are now at this crisis because we have had several different a uh, uh, lifestyle for many years that has evolved. Uh, within our societies. So I don't think it's uh, realistic to expect quick changes. But there is a, 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 a better quality of life horizon ahead of us. And the idea is to have better relationships among brothers, sisters and the earth. And that's what motivates me at, uh, at least. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny. Angelo and Jeronimo, maybe you can say something about how you, you know, continue doing this painstaking work uh, with um, article authors. Angelo, would you like to go first? No, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, Jeronimo has founded LAT21, so he really knows the nitty gritty of the structure. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, we have worked with, at LAT21, we have worked with different professionals and they are used to, you know, working with uh, the media, they use a more accessible language and many of them are columnists in uh, national uh, newspapers. And when we started working with the IAI, we noticed that some people had never written for media outlets or for non-experts. And that maybe they were not so interested in connecting with uh, the uh, larger audience uh, as, a, I don't know, a political scientist might. So we needed to work harder. Maybe sorry, um, we there's something wrong with the Uyo connection, Jerónimo. Ya se nos congeló Jerónimo. Bueno, no sé si mientras tanto. Uh, let's see if it has improved. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So, our work with IAI researchers, they do a different type of research, and this work is more uh, complex. It takes more preparation time. We need to explain how, uh, how a text works. But in the end, if the process, is, might, if the process might be shorter or longer, we have one objective, we have an outcome, you know, and we might end up with uh, higher quality texts because uh, they were written based on very serious studies. So the, the, the quality of the content was amazing. 
and the resulting articles were of excellent quality as well. Finally, the media network, that's also painstaking work that we have to do from LAT 21 and it has taken, taken us a long time. Now we have 20 media outlets, Folia Sao Paulo, Brazil, Clarina, Argentina, El Espectador, Colombia, El Universal, Mexico. These are the main, you know, the main newspapers in each of these countries. And the same applies to the other countries. And, you know, uh, this is a, a difficult path. Once the media outlets know the content, they are really grateful. And then our relationship with them improves. Regarding the IAI, uh, the, uh, and because the IAI participated, the, the newspapers were very receptive. The content was different, of course, but they were published uh, in the newspapers in, in any case. So the result has been very positive. And clearly, we have room for improvement. We can publish more texts. If you're interested, in you know writing your reflections sharing your ideas or the results of your research please contact us maybe send us your idea in one paragraph and we can help you write it edit it and then publish it so of course you're all welcome thank you Geronimo uh, in my experience uh, communication media define or, or co uh, define public policy agendas and um, public opinion agendas in each country. But it's very important that the uh, scientific community from the co-creating community and from grassroots, uh, uh, the grassroots level, we should contribute to the, to the media and find a way to contribute to uh, agenda setting. For instance, by disseminating knowledge, publishing articles, especially uh, towards the COP27 to take place in November. There is still time. We can reach decision makers. We can reach media outlets so that we can position, uh, you know, get some topics included in the agenda because these topics are important for science and the civil society. Thank you everyone for your time. But not just today, of course. Thank you to the participants who have heard us today. And also thank you to everyone who has read our uh, texts. And also thank you to our future readers when you get the compendium in the three languages, English, uh, Spanish, and Portuguese. Thank you very much for being here today and we'll see each other in the next webinar tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.